battles were created by design. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Expand it to 500 pages, so I just spared you a lot of wasted reading. Although they would be really good to some sleep at night. Uh, now, I know what's going to happen, that there will be creationists who will look at this and say, no, there is more to his argument than that. Well, there's a lot of detail stolen from biology, but the premises are right there. And so, just to confirm that, I'm going to show you some quotes from Stephen Meyer Forbes. Uh, here's what he says. So, first of all, what he was recognized as information, etc., etc., invariably reflects the prior activity of conscious and intelligent persons. Uh, when he talks about specified complexity or information, it invariably originates from intelligent source. And he also there, a little farther on, says, okay, uh, invariably creative intelligence, or creative intelligence, intelligent design played a role in the origin of, of entities. You notice there's kind of a theme here. This is another reason it's 500 pages long. He repeats himself over and over again using the same terminology. Uh, but here, this is the premise that the only way you can get complexity, the only way you can get information, uh, in particular, the only way you can get what he calls specified information, and I, will, I promise I will return to that word specified in the data. The only way you can get specified information is if somebody sits down with a brain and designs it. And it's not true. There's lots of ways to get complexity. And we see complexity all over in nature. And here's one example. Uh, I like beaches. This is a nice storm tossed beach that you find up in Washington State called Rialto Beach. It's very pretty. Uh, and as is typical of the beaches up there, what you find is this litter of driftwood. Is that simple? No, it's pretty darn complex. It's scattered logs all over the place. It's not easily describable. Uh, you know, try drawing it. Especially if I turn the slide off, then try drawing it. Now, this is, this is complicated stuff. Uh, it is not complicated stuff in the sense that it's got a purpose, however. But that's part of my point. There's lots of ways to get complexity without purpose. And it happens all the time. So, we've got this incredible complexity here, and it also ends up having a function. So, a wall of driftwood is a wall. It functions as a wall. If you're trying to get down to that beach, it's in your way. It's a barrier. But again, it's not a wall to build a new tent. Nobody designed that wall. And nobody's arguing that. So here we've got this complex structure that functions as a wall, but also has many other functions. And there's no intent behind it. We can also find other kinds of walls, lots of walls like this. Uh, this wall you would look at and say, hey, that's design, no problem. What would be the things that would tell you that it's designed, though? It's not that it's complex. The thing that's to tell you that it's designed is regularity, that there's a pattern there, that it's fairly simple. And you'd also be able to tell that it's designed because you've seen other walls like this, and you know how they're built. You could dissect that wall and you'd say, well, it's made out of mortar and bricks. Those are human constructions right there. So you'd have no problem saying that that is designed. But one of the curious things about it is it's not particularly complex. So we've got a couple of criteria going on here. If you look at natural structures, they are built by chance and necessity. They are functionally unspecified. So, like I said, nobody claims that the driftwood wall was built to be a wall. It just happens to be where, this, where the high tide storms throw up piles of log. And it's also pretty complex. When we look at artificial walls, we got a bunch of other structures that we see. We see that it's, it's built with intent, and we know this because we've seen prior walls. We've seen people build them with intent. There, there's no argument there. We also see they're functionally specific. So what is that brick wall for? It's a wall. You can think of a few other things you can do with it. You can sit on it, but basically, it's a wall. And it's relatively simple. This is something that seems to be very hard to get across to creationists. When you look at engineering, what do engineers do? They try not to just throw in a bird's nest of crap into things. They're designing for simplicity. You make things as simple as they can be while still having the same function. So simplicity is actually a hallmark of engineering and design. 
Okay. So, okay, that's complicated. But it doesn't have intent. There are other things that are complicated, even more complicated. That's something maybe you're familiar with. This is the Mandelbrot set. Uh, the Mandelbrot set is a mathematical construction, it's a function that you can that you can calculate. And what you get is these really elaborate diagrams like this. And it's even more elaborate than seems here because you can zoom in on any part of it. And there's more and more detail built deep into this. Now, how is that built? Is it complicated or simple? When you look at this, it's really complicated. When you look at the function, this is it. Uh, this is this is calculating the complex number plane. We don't need these over complex numbers here. But let me just tell you right there at the bottom it says z n plus one equals z n squared plus c. It's a very simple function to apply iteratively to each point where c is the coordinates of a point. And you ask whether in this function, when you do it over and over again, will get very, very large or whether it will stay within a small bound. But don't worry about the math. Basically, a really simple function generates very, very complex forms. So once again, what's the big deal with complexity? Complexity is not a surprising thing. It happens all the time. Now, in science, though, you know, it's, it's not enough to say, well, gee, that looks complicated. Or, gee, that trick wood wall looks complicated. Or, gee, that wall, that brick wall looks simple. Uh, you've got to have a measure of complexity. And in science, we have a couple of ways of measuring complexity. And I'll mention one. It's called Shannon information. And uh, what Shannon information, it's been around for 50 or so years. It's, it's well established, it's mathematically rigorous. It's a good, solid way to calculate uh, the information content of something. Uh, it's defined here, uh, Shannon information is a decrease in the uncertainty of a receiver. That is, when you, when you receive some information, uh, it resolves uncertainty. You now know something about the state of the sender. And as it says here, it's, it's a rigorous mathematical property. You can measure it, you can quantify it. Uh, what I'm showing in this particular graph is there, there's a paper from 2000 by Schneider uh, where he talks about the evolution of biological information. And what he does is apply Shannon information theory to DNA. Okay, DNA is you know, strings of nucleotides. And so he's using Shannon information theory to come up with a specific number. In particular, he's looking at a particular sequence of DNA that binds to that produces a protein and binds to other proteins. And so what's the probability that that will come up? And so we can get an information uh, measure there. And what he does is he starts an assimilation with a random sequence of DNA, which basically has no information. He sticks anything in it randomly. Uh, arbitrarily, it will not match the specifications that he set. And then you run it through a selection process where you mutate. Select the sequences that will bind yes to your target. Do this over and over and over again. And what you can see is a rise of information. That's the green line. So right away, he's defeating one of the creationist arguments. Creationists say that, that you cannot generate new information without the uh, conclusion of intent by the designer. That's not present in the system. This is purely mathematical natural selection, and you get a measured increase in information content. Also, he does things like removes the selection process, just lets mutation go on. Uh, the red line there, uh, the information content drops very rapidly. So this has been established firmly. We can do this. We can measure this. What we need from the creationists, if they want to back up their claims, is we need a measure of complexity. We need something scientific. And here's something really peculiar about creationists. They don't use Shannon information theory. They don't use any of the established principles of information theory. Instead, what they do, and this is where I bring in the word I've mentioned before, they talk about 